Last month, we took a look at a crash uh, that took place with a medevac flight out of Northeast Philadelphia. That entire flight lasted less than 40 seconds. All six people on board the aircraft were killed, plus one civilian on the ground. Now, the NTSB has released their preliminary findings on that crash. I want to go back and take a look at what I think was the initial cause of the crash, and then let's take a look at some of these shocking revelations that have come out in this NTSB finding. Let's take a look. Medevac Med Service 056, contact Philly departure 123.8. 123.8, Mike Tango Sierra 056, Medevac. Thank you. Good day. So it's Medevac 056. It's uh, an airplane with two experienced pilots on board. Uh, they take off out of northeast Philadelphia. They're handed off to departure, probably somewhere around 1,000 feet in altitude, as we're going to find out from the NTSB report. This flight never makes it above 1,600 feet before something catastrophic happens. But you can hear from the voice of the co-pilot responding to the handoff to departure. Everything seems normal. He says, thank you, good day. He never dials in the frequency for departure. Departure is going to call in a minute to see where they are. Med Service 056 Philadelphia. She calls once, no response. Med Service 056 Philadelphia. She calls twice, and that's where Med 056 is. All right, let me stop right there and let me talk about what I think happened here to this flight. This happens so quickly. This is all in real time from the time they got handed off to departure to the time they impacted the ground. We're trying to piece it together, but it looks like it's something less than 10 to 12 seconds. How can an airplane that's going 242 knots of ground speed, according to the NTSB report, at 1,600 feet, impact the ground in less than 10 seconds? There's really only two explanations, and one is so crazy uh, that it doesn't make any sense. And you might look at this and go, what, they get shot down? Well, no, they didn't get shot down, and nobody's saying that. Uh, but that's the only other crazy explanation that would explain this. The other one is this. At some point, they lost something that was helping them generate uh, flight. Uh, it, could a wing have come off? Could an engine have fallen off? Well, the answer to that now we know is no. Uh, it was not anything that was reported in the NTSB finding. This airplane was completely intact when it went into the ground. Does that mean that both of the engines were operating normally? We don't know that yet. That's going to come out later when they are able to analyze the black box data, which they have said now in the report has been shipped off for further analysis. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Look, I need to get so real for a minute. I eat out way too much on the way to the airport at my destination, layover delays. My schedule is crazy, but I have another problem. I get home, I'm exhausted from all the travel and I just don't want to cook. Like the idea of having to go through all that prep work to make a hot meal makes me just want to go to sleep. That's where the sponsor of today's video Factor comes in to save the day. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of preparing, cooking, and cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. And with my in and out schedule, Factor is flexible. You can change your order up to every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week, or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. And it tastes good. I mean, just look at that man. Gosh, he looks so happy right now. This is the face of a man who is enjoying his meal with reckless abandon. Ah, uh, oh. All right, where was I? Oh, Factor. Factor takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 50 Captain Steve to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first Factor box. That's code 50 Captain Steve at factor75.com to get 50% off plus free shipping on your first box. And thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. What's happening to this airplane? I Here's my conjecture on how they got into that steep descent. And you look at the angle of the descent, 
and the, it's 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 such a steep angle that screen on the right shows you exactly you can see that little dot in the sky it's almost completely 90 degrees to the ground the ntsb report said it was at an angle of 22 degrees uh zero would be straight up and down so 22 degrees is almost straight up and down they're accelerating as they go into the ground here's my conjecture i think they lost an engine now uh, there's been several people who have talked about the loss of an engine. Uh, this airplane has what's called centerline thrust. In other words, both of the engines are attached to the fuselage. Pure centerline thrust would be like an F-16 or an A-4. One engine right in the middle of the airplane, two wings, and if you lose that engine, it's right down the center. The airplane's not going to yaw one way or another if you lose that engine. If you have... Uh, engines on the outside of the fuselage in the back if one goes stops producing thrust the other is going to push the airplane in this direction it's going to try to yaw if the engines were out on the wings that's even more exaggerated if you lose one engine out here it's really going to push the airplane to yaw so what's going to happen is the rudder is going to automatically try to compensate because the airflow is pushing the rudder in a different direction it's called dead foot dead engine if you lose an engine your dead foot, the one that doesn't feel anything pushing against it, is the side where the engine has failed. The other rudder pedal will push against your other foot. And when you feel that pressure against your other foot, the counterintuitive thing is to push back, which is what you should do to help straighten out the airplane and stop that yawing moment. My explanation is this, and this is just Steve's conjecture on what might have happened. I think when they lost that engine, they got a little bit of yawing and the, and the unnatural or the awkward thing to do is when you feel that pressure against your foot is to not push back and to actually push on the opposite rudder, the wrong rudder, the dead foot rudder. If you do that, you exacerbate the problem. You make it a whole lot worse. And there is a potential for the airplane to snap roll. And so you lose that engine and in a panic, you, you hear a fire warning, you see a light, you press on the wrong rudder and the airplane snap rolls on its back and accelerates into the ground. At 1,600 feet above the ground, it's going to take about seven to eight seconds to impact the ground. And there's no opportunity to pull out of that steep dive. If he was at 10,000 feet, 20,000 feet, he might have time to pull out of that steep dive. In this case, I think he stepped on the wrong rudder and the airplane went on its back. Uh, you can't tell from any of these pictures whether the airplane's on its back. I'm just here to tell you if the pilot tried to push the airplane over at 240 knots, it would never get to that steep uh, dive angle and it certainly wouldn't do it in 8 to 10 seconds. So now that picture on the left with the sign, you can see at the top of the Macy sign there, there's a little dent. And I believe that that one of the wings, either the right wing or the left wing, impacted that the top of that sign. And then you can see the crater. You can go back and look at the, at the video and see the explosion. Uh, it went for blocks. It was such a, a force of impact uh, that there was debris everywhere. Some people were injured uh, in the vicinity. One person was killed. Now, let's turn our attention to that NTSB report that just came out. Because uh, right here, it says there's a couple of things that I think are semi-shocking. One is that the cockpit voice recorder was not operating. And it says right here in the findings, uh, besides the size of the crater and all of that, that they uh, finally got the, uh, the cockpit voice recorder out. And it was mangled pretty bad, but they can put those things back together. They do what's called auditioning. When they audition it, they basically kind of get it to work again, or they try to get something from it. They realized when they auditioned this cockpit voice recorder that it hadn't been operating for what they say in the report is several years. Several years. All right. First of all, a cockpit voice recorder that doesn't work is a no-go item. You can't go flying without a cockpit voice recorder that doesn't work. The fact that they've been flying around for several years without this working is indicative to me of the quality of maintenance on this particular airplane. Uh, we can surmise out that other maintenance issues were maybe pencil whipped or not done properly. I don't know if that translates into an engine failing, but I do know that if the cockpit voice recorder wasn't operating, that there may be other things that are suspicious or suspect on this airplane uh, not operating. Both pilots uh, have quite a bit of flight time. Uh, I think the captain had uh, 9,200 hours and the first officer had uh, 2,600 hours. So this is a crew that is, again, uh, not new, 
uh, to fly in airplanes. So they've got lots of years of experience, but even the most seasoned pilot can make that inadvertent mistake and step on the wrong rudder. If the pilot did that and stepped on the wrong rudder, the airplane may snap roll onto its back and then impact the ground rather quickly. Um, sadly, there's more to come. The, uh, the uh, GPWS, which is the ground proximity warning system uh, on the airplane also has data that it collects. That data has been sent off for further analysis. There's no report on that yet. That hopefully would give us information on whether they pushed the wrong rudder or if an engine was lost or what exactly their rate of descent was when they hit the ground. Lots of details like that I think are important. We're not going to get any dialogue back and forth between the two pilots because the cockpit voice recorder hasn't worked for several years. That's shocking to me. Uh, there's gonna be more details to come about this flight in the future, but right now that gives you my up-to-the-date analysis on what happened to this medevac flight uh, out of Philadelphia. It's a sad circumstance for everybody. It shouldn't happen, and uh, it says something about the quality of maintenance on this particular airplane. Well, there you have it. Now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.